What's up, guys? We're here. This is the holiday party I have promised for a couple of weeks now. So welcome. I want to say thank you so much for joining the live party here. I am going to be doing a shout out. So leave leave a comment in the live chat and partway through here. We'll do a lot. We'll do we'll do some shout outs. So I promised an eggnog, eggnog party. So we got it. Here we are. We got we got the garlic. I had to go with the garlic eggnog. Uh, apparently in Cassie's, um, she, she thought that I made a mistake by not going with Stewart's. And I think she's right. This is decent eggnog. Uh, I also here have my glass. This is the Marty Moose Christmas vacation glass. I think I made a mistake in a recent video and I said this was actually a reindeer. And you know what? Noah corrected me. He said, that's not a reindeer, that's a moose. So if you saw that video and thought I was an idiot and you didn't want to leave a comment, that's fine. Happy holidays, pull up a glass of eggnog and let's talk about a few topics. Yeah, it's all right. Stewart's is better, it's definitely thicker. So we went through that. Uh, one thing I need you to guys to do if you're in, if you're in the live right now, hit like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, I I dropped a new design of a t-shirt from a retro t-shirt from back in the day. Worst day of my life. It's down in the links below if you want to get a version of it. I'm doing hoodies. I'm doing t-shirts. Got child. I got toddlers. You, the, any proceeds from that go directly into the channel. And next year I want to build out this live streaming so that. I can do some like bring some people in and uh, you know, do overlays like and like get a command center. And for that, I will need some kind of uh, you know funding because right now we're losing money at doing this channel. So if you want a t-shirt, you can order it in the link below. Anyway, if you're leaving comments, I'm looking at them. I'm watching you guys, Van Dominic, my brother. Uh, I say Stewart's. Uh, some people up here say Stewart's. Leslie Garrett. Hi, Leslie. So that's all the business end of it. So let's go through the topics that I, I lined up for tonight. The first topic is this. This is the Godfather Coda, the death of Michael Corleone. It's a recut of, I'm seeing people drop off. It's pretty funny. Um, it's a recut of the Godfather part three, and it's in the original vision of Francis Ford Coppola. I watched this movie and it's a complete joke. Okay. So the it's no secret that that Godfather 3 is the one that everybody loves to hate. Uh, there's a lot of problems with Godfather 3. I'm not going to say it's the greatest movie on the planet because it's not, but I don't think that it deserves all of the hate that it gets after all these years. And I think that in order to kind of placate the audience, he made this cut, which is supposedly in the original vision of the movie and he's kind of oversimplified it to the point where it's just i don't know so the first thing is visually he he removed the kind of filter on the film that makes it a little bit um grainy and you know not bright colored so it looks like a modern movie so okay you can get past that that that's one of those things where you know back in the day you're watching this stuff on vhs and it, it doesn't matter how it looks right he also simplified the plot. So there, the, um, the scenes have been reordered and scenes have been removed and it used to be kind of an intertwined story that, you know, things unravel. There's the whole thing with the Vatican and all that stuff. It builds to the crescendo, you know, the, the opera scene and all that stuff like that. And everything was intertwined. Now it's like kind of a skit movie where like something happens and then the next thing happens instead of getting this whole progression of Joey Zaza getting pissed off and ordering the hit, you know, now it just basically you're at the party at the Corleone house. Then they have the, you know, the hit with the helicopters and then they move to going to the Vatican and it's just very, it's paced out in a very simple way. I guess it simplifies the plot, but that's to me not a Godfather movie. So Leslie saying eggnog's gross. You're kind of right. This eggnog is is also not very good. Damn garlic. So those are my main issues with it. A lot of the scenes that he cut um, involve Sofia Coppola, and um, I think that's a good thing. I think one of the reasons why the movie suffered is because Sofia Coppola was not a good actress. So. It is what it is. 
Um, I'm actually pissed that they took out two scenes from the movie. One of them is there's when, when they do that helicopter hit, there's an old guy that gets killed. And as he's dying, he, his dying words are Joe Zaza, you son of a bit, you know, CH. And, uh, they cut that out and it was kind of a cheesy line, but it was one of those things that made the movie fun. The other thing they cut out and it, and it really is annoying. There's a scene where one of the guys is going to, is, is taking a train ride in Italy to make the, uh, you know, make a kill. And he's on a train with uh, one of those tins of butter cookies. And in the original, they show him remove the top layer of cookies and to show a gun on the bottom layer, like intertwined in the cookies. And to me, that that was like a funny thing to watch. I uh, They took that. It was like a B-roll shot. It's barely a second in the original movie, but they took it out of this. And I rewound it a few times to, ch- to double check that. And that was one of those things where I'm like, why would you remove that? It actually like added to the story. You know, the guys on the train and go kill somebody. So those were the things that kind of, you know, I, I don't know the, 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 those pissed me off. And then the other thing is you'll see here. It's the death of Michael Corleone. The original movie actually ends with him dying. Spoiler alert. You now, now, you know, a movie from 30 years ago, 35 years ago, um, 30 years ago. Um, he dies at the end of it in this cut of the movie. He doesn't die. So it's a literal death, you know? So, and also there's a splash screen at the end. It's like, Centani, which is the Italian for cheers, means in good health um, for a hundred years, um, and a Sicilian never forgets. So you could see there that's as cheesy as it gets. Uh, and that's all I'm gonna say about Godfather 3. So that's topic number one. I I forgot to actually mention this is my Griswold t-shirt from Chris, Christmas Vacation to kind of go with my gross eggnog in my Marty Moose mug. I, I don't see Brian G in the chat, but I'm sure he would try to get me to chug this stuff, even though all you guys are hating on eggnog. And Rory, I have had the eggnog ice cream. It's very good. The next topic I wanted to talk about in line with the holiday parties is actually like holiday traditions. So in my family, we don't do too many things that are like super tra- tradition. I guess maybe we do. Um, usually go to my parents' house on Christmas Eve. Uh they do a lot of the fishy stuff and that's not my thing. So I've always for a long time brought like meats and cheeses and stuff that I would actually eat. And we've kind of started now Cassie goes shopping for a lot of that stuff. And, um, you know, so we, we do like kind of a cheese board with crackers, uh, extra toasty cheese. It's that's for my brother, Dom. Uh, you know, he loves those things. Rory, if you, if you we were late, this is garlic, garlic eggnog. Um, another tradition is my mom makes uh, homemade zeppoli for me, which is, uh, like a powdered sugar, like the thing you get at the fair. And those are very good as far as I'm concerned. Then we do our presents and all that stuff. And my brother mentioned that my, my dad used to bring home a ham and then we would roast it and it would be dry. So that was a tradition. You gotta, you gotta live a little, you know, the other, the other thing we, you know, Christmas day is more low key. You know, now we have a son and. We know we'll do the presents with him and stuff. Um, this year, we're doing it a little different. The other holiday tradition that we have is actually on New Year's Day, believe it or not. We kind of go, you know, live it up in between a little bit. But New Year's Day, we have a we every New Year's Day, I make homemade sausage and Cassie makes homemade biscuits and we do sausage gravy and biscuits for breakfast. So those are the holiday traditions in the uh, Papandrea house. And another thing I want to mention Brian G last week after the feed mentioned that uh, the the uh, quality was kind of um, lacking at some points in the feed. Um, this time I actually upgraded my internet. Now we're paying Spectrum a little bit extra. So if you do notice that the quality goes downhill, let me know in the comments here. And uh, I'll be taking that up with Spectrum because now they're getting too much of my money. Let's see here in the live chat. It's funny, like, um, so eggnog ice cream, that, that's a fun thing to talk about real quick. Um, Stewart's now has an eggnog ice cream, like Rory mentioned in the chat. And we tried it a few weeks ago. It tastes very good. It tastes like their eggnog. 
I, I wonder, and I always wondered, I, I'm going to try it this year. What would happen if you just take eggnog and churn it? Because it basically is, I know Keith Frank in the chat here is probably gro going to be grossed out by this, but um, it's basically like a custard. It's just like eggy. I think this, this stuff probably has like a bunch of gums, high fructose corn syrup, carrageenan, which if you, if you, if you read everything online, you would think that's the worst thing for you on the planet. Uh, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta live a little. I don't see Brian G, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it anyway. One of the topics that he had suggested for what we're going to do here tonight is the monoliths that are popping up all over the world. And it's funny because like, I thought it was, would be a joke, but actually it keeps happening. So I think the first one popped up in Utah a few weeks ago. And it was funny because I, I was watching the news or watching the news articles online trying not to pay attention to the political jargon that Rory likes to feed into. Um, so I'm watching, watching these stories and there's like monoliths popping up and I'm like, why? Like he did, this was like a movie, right? Like, you know, 2001, a space odyssey, Kubrick. I, uh, yeah. So, so Keith, Keith was, was going, said, made the comment. I was just about to, a dude went up to one and, and tapped on it and it was hollow. So I think I think these are a publicity stunt. Now I don't know what it's a publicity stunt for, but like they've been popping up. I think one was in Tokyo like last week. And I think that's what, what Brian was talking about when he told me to talk about it at the thing. There was one at like some fort fort place in Florida where it popped up a couple like three days ago. I, I saw that. And um Keith says it's some guy's welding project. I don't know, but I think I think these things are gonna lead to something. And one of the one of the um the first one was like mystery solved. The uh, the monolith in Utah was shot on a lot that HBO's Westworld was shot on. It might be a leftover prop, and then that was debunked. So it's one of those things where, if you follow the news on this, it's definitely captivating. And I don't know what to make of it, but I I think this is definitely coming up into some kind of publicity stunt for something. You know, I don't. I don't know. It's just, it's too weird. Like obviously somebody's putting them there. This isn't like a crop circle situation. Let's see here. So that's the monolith. Brian, you wanted me to talk about this stuff. <clears throat> All right. I have one more topic and then I have a few other things to go into that are holiday related. Um, so I just finished a rewatch of the Sopranos. And I've been working on it for the last few weeks. And this time I wanted to watch it from the, from, from the view of what does the ending mean? I know a lot of people debate the final scene and it can go either way. And there's a lot of, a lot of debate about it. Now, I guess I'm going to go there because I think that if you watch, if you watch the show as a whole, it's pretty obvious what the what the, the scene means. In season six, it all falls apart. Okay, in in the last couple episodes, there there's really nothing left for Tony in the world other than his kids, and you know even in the second to last episode, they have to live on the lamb, and you know that's not going to go away, and the people in New York were just total scumbags. So. It's pretty obvious that the end is the obvious ending that it was supposed to be. I um, that's what I feel like this time I rewatched it. I know that uh, like another time I, I rewatched it and I was like, yeah, you know what? They totally lived and life went on, and you know it was all fine. Um, I don't know. I th I'm pretty sure that that was the intended ending. And also, they're little like they never really did flashbacks two scenes in the show and you know they they show you the scene where uh, they're on the boat with him and bakala and he tells them you know you never you probably never even hear it coming so i don't know i mean that was one of those things i definitely wanted to cover here i might do a, a, a full length video for the channel on that because i do think that i i know i'm noticing that a lot more people are talking about it because the the prequel series is coming up and rory i was about to get there so apparently david chase did admit that that was supposed to happen that you know tony did um pass away 
um, in the show. But then I saw that there were he like after he had made that comment, he had like basically ba- you know backpedaled on it and went back to his whole it was a creative thing. I don't know. I um I think it was fun at the time. I I uh, at the so Keith mentioned Seinfeld best ending in history other than other than Seinfeld, and I agree Seinfeld was a great ending. But I don't know if you guys remember there was this power outage during the finale of Seinfeld in the Northeast where the screens went black when the judge was delivering the verdict. So it was like exactly like the Sopranos. I, I almost feel like it, like the Sopranos might've been influenced by that in some way. That'd be funny if there was like a connection there, because I guess it, it w- in both Seinfeld and the Sopranos, it would have been hard to live up to, uh, you know, that ending in either case. So yeah, it's just a funny little thing. <clears throat> So another thing, like last week, I forgot to mention the things that are upcoming for the channel. So tomorrow I have a video coming. And uh, if you if you don't like eggnog, it's not going to be for you. I'm doing copycat Starbucks eggnog lattes, which are awesome. And uh, it's a five-minute video. It's, it's going to be a really good one. I, I was a little late to the game on that. I came up with that idea a few days ago. And, uh, you know, I, I noticed that there are a few of those videos on YouTube already. So I'm hoping I can catch a wave a little bit, catch a break and get get a, a video going popular on here. You know, but otherwise I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep making the recipes, keep doing the dining. I have a dining post coming on Saturday. It is going to be another good one. It's a little longer than the last few. Monday, in honor of The Godfather 3 being re-released, I have a homemade gnocchi recipe, which uh, is very, it's its the simplest way to make gnocchi. I think you're, you're going to like that one as well. And then in between, I'm posting some shorts on YouTube. I'm trying not to, to load up the subscription feed. So uh, you'll have to go to the channel to watch those directly or get them in your recommended. Or if you're in the app and you use shorts, it'll, they'll come up for you. So that's all that's going on. The next live video. So next Wednesday, because I won't be available Thursday because of Christmas Eve, doing our little holiday tradition stuff. Next Wednesday night, we're going to do another live. And I'm going to do hot takes, things that people like that I don't because it's Scrooge. So this this is the uplifting positive holiday party. Next week, we're going to do the, the hot takes, things that are... Not as good as people think they are. And uh, I'm not going to hold back on that one. Let's see here. Let's check in the live chat before I go to my next point here. Got to finish the eggnog. And that is enough of that. Looks like we got some good comments in there. A lot of people talking about some some shows. Keith, I never watched New Heart, believe it or not. And... Uh, Never really wanted to. Give me a reason to watch that show. But I would agree. The uh, the best television endings of all time, I would say Sopranos is definitely up there. Seinfeld is definitely up there. I thought Breaking Bad was a little bit cheesy, the way that ended. Let's see. I can't really think of any others that were great. I think one of the worst endings of all time was Friends. Actually, that probably was the worst. I, and I, yes, I watched every episode of Friends. Did not love every episode of Friends, but um, but yeah, that ending was horrible. There was something I watched recently that I'm like, this is a great ending. Dexter has a bad one. Okay, yeah, I, I never watched Dexter. I maybe maybe I should, so I could be disappointed at the end of it. Leslie never watched Friends. That's interesting. It's on, it, it, it was on reruns forever. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, so Friends and Seinfeld. That like, there's always that debate. There's Friends people and Seinfeld people. I'm clearly a Seinfeld person. I, uh, you know, Curb Your Enthusiasm, one of my favorite shows. Larry David, co-writer of Seinfeld, makes that show. Uh, in many ways, I think Curb Your Enthusiasm might be better than Seinfeld in a lot of ways. I. Uh, I think Seinfeld toward the end got a little bit far fetched and kind of lost the lost the groove, if that makes sense. And yeah, guys, so that's basically it. 
like the video. That that really helps out. Even if you don't want to, just hit like. Believe believe me, it helps out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out. I'm going to put some videos on the screen for people watching this after the live feed. You want to watch those as well. That helps out as well. And uh, you know, I'm going to put my previous live videos up on the screen because that I'm keeping those up to hopefully see if people want to join the live sessions. Don't forget next Wednesday night, we got the, the Grinch, the Ebenezer Scrooge, whatever you want to call me. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much for joining. I'll talk to you guys next week.